Okay, so we are getting into the middle of March, and just like last year around this time, we are starting to see a huge uptick in severe weather, and that's going to be the main topic of today's video. But also, we've got some big-time fire problems unfolding today down here in the southern U.S. This is the SPC's fire weather conditions outlook. We've got a three, or an extremely critical outlook for portions of the Texas Panhandle and western Oklahoma today, which is the highest level outlook that can be issued. It's almost a guarantee today that some wildfires will be started out there. And thanks to very strong winds, low relative humidity, and a lot of dry fuels on the ground, these wildfires could spread rapidly and uncontrollably, leading to loss of property and maybe even lives if precautions aren't taken now and if warnings aren't heeded and evacuation orders aren't followed. We just had a big problem with fires in this area not too long ago, so I'm sure everybody's kind of on edge and really paying attention. But I wanted to make sure that we talked about this because there's going to be a lot of very strong dry winds down here and the fires are almost guaranteed and the crazy thing is all of that dry air that's blowing up across the southern part of the u.s up there in texas and oklahoma is actually part of what's fueling our severe weather system today which we have to talk about because there is an enhanced risk of severe weather into kansas and missouri and this one does come with a tornado risk in the brown there we've got a five percent probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of any given point but this enhanced risk and really the overall slight risk and everything is driven by a really big hail risk. We've got a 30 to 44 percent hatched risk of significant damaging hail in the highlighted zones there. So that's going to be the main threat by far today. And guess what? It don't stop today. Tomorrow, we're going to see an expansive slight risk of severe weather from Illinois all the way down to Texas, from Dallas almost up to Chicago, with another enhanced risk of severe weather in Arkansas and eastern portions of Oklahoma. This one's also going to have a tornado risk associated with it. A big two percent probability in the green and then another 5% probability of seeing a tornado in the brown down there. But guess what? This one's also going to be driven by a hail threat as well. We're going to see some big time hail storms tomorrow in the red and yellow zones and especially in that hatched zone with the dotted lines. That's where we expect to see some severe damaging hail as we go through the day on Thursday. So here's what the radar could look like today around 2 p.m. It doesn't look that impressive, right? There's not a lot going on. You do see our snow showers associated with the parent storm that's causing causing all of these problems over here in Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, down into Arizona and New Mexico. But there's not a lot going on in the central U.S. But that's about to change, especially as we go into the evening and overnight hours tonight. In fact, it doesn't look like these storms are really going to start popping off until about 8 or 9 p.m. But when they do start popping up out here, they're going to be ferocious, okay? There's going to be a lot of energy coming up from the south, meeting up with some cooler air that's kind of just hanging out up here. And when those air masses collide, things are going to get interesting very quickly, mostly in the form of hail. Now, don't get me wrong. There's definitely a chance of a tornado or two here, but we're talking about some major big hailstones with these supercells as they first erupt into the atmosphere. And then by the time we get into 1 or 2 a.m., the storms will really start to congeal into a multicellular or cluster kind of system, and the severe weather threat's going to go down, but the heavy rain, flash flooding threat, and just the overall lightning threat is going to go up for this massive area here as the warm front continues to go to the north. In fact, fact, inside of that warm front, a little mesoscale convective system might try to form within itself here and produce another line of storms that kind of propagates eastwards. As we go into the morning tomorrow, we could see some strong winds in places like St. Louis and Peoria, Illinois and Bloomington right when you first wake up tomorrow as this warm front has kind of created its own little weather system here and it races to the east. But that will also very quickly dissipate as we go farther into the day. And after that gets out of our hair, our focus shifts back down here to the south. This is on Thursday around 3 or 4 p.m. We do expect more supercells to form down here in Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Missouri. These will also have the capability of producing very large hail right at the beginning when they first start popping up. In my opinion, on this day, we've got a slightly better tornado threat as well, especially down here in the south. But a similar thing is going to happen with these storms once we get to 8, 9, 10 o'clock. They're going to become more congealed. It's going to become a linear system or a cluster-like system of storms, and we won't have as many supercells, but we will have a much larger expansive area of general thunderstorms that still have the ability of producing strong winds and hail, but not as much as what we were seeing early in the day. And that's going to continue to go east and eventually fizzle out. A lot of that energy is going to kind of flatten out and kind of train over the same areas over and over again in Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi in the form of strong thunderstorms, mostly with heavy rain all the way through Friday and Saturday. And that, in my opinion, will probably lead to some flash flooding. In fact, 
fact, if you take a look at the total precipitation expected over the next several days, there's a lot of areas in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi especially, that are looking to get more than six inches of rain. And if any of that falls in a very short period of time, creeks and streams will certainly flood. So we want you to be prepared for potential flash flood. But once the system kind of moves out of here on Friday, we're really going to be quiet for a little while. The next thing that we're going to watch is this big lobe of cold air that's dipping down from Canada here as we go towards the latter half of the weekend. We're going to get much chillier in the central and eastern U.S. thanks to this, and we're going to continue to see the showers and thunderstorms pop up in the southeast as these two air masses are colliding now, the warmth from the Gulf and then this lobe of cold air. And this will lead to a period of lake effect and lake-enhanced snow, especially in the eastern Great Lakes region, possibly even up against the Appalachian Mountains as well, as this is actually some pretty intense cold air for this time of year. But I don't think it's going to be anything like what we've seen in Buffalo recently. I don't think we're going to see six feet of snow or anything like that, but certainly an impactful brief event there before the next warm up. That's right. Another ridge is going to be moving in as we go towards the latter half of next week. And then that's where things get interesting. According to the GFS, that ridge is going to go untouched all the way until Sunday, March 24th. And then boom, we're going to have a chance for another wrecking ball of a system to come through right around March 25th with a much larger bowl of cold air behind it, a real snowstorm on the backside, and in my opinion, a much better chance of severe weather in the southeast. Of course, this is 200, 300 hours away, so this is going to change a lot, but I think that we are going to get in this more traditional spring pattern where we see these much larger troughs swing through, and we're going to have a couple of chances of some significant widespread severe weather outbreaks as we go through the latter half of March, and they're going to look like this. Negatively tilted troughs, cold air swinging down this way, the warm air sneaking up back around like this. This is the kind of storm system that leads to the most impactful weather here in the U.S., and I do think we're going to get at least a couple of these before we exit March and enter April. But all that's way down the road in the future. Let's focus on the short term here and mostly talk about the severe weather threats that we have over the next couple of days. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Just make sure you know what you're going to do if and when a considerable destructive severe thunderstorm warning is issued for your area or, of course, a tornado warning is issued for your area. And that's all the weather I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh. In the event of a tornado, we've had to take our safety into our own hands here at the Weather House. And let me show you how we've done that. Just outside of the studio here, we've installed something really cool. Come look at it. Just look at that thing. It's right outside of the studio, literally just steps away. Ours is called the Twister Pod Max, and it's made by Survive a Storm Storm Shelters. This is an above ground tornado shelter that can fit up to six people, and it's bolted into the ground. It's engineered to withstand up to EF5 tornado winds of over 250 miles per hour. This bad boy right here is made out of 100% steel, so you don't have to worry about it cracking or crumbling or even leaking. And the peace of mind that our small team has because this thing is here is priceless. And it was super simple to install with the help of an NSSA contractor. I've been searching for quite some time for a storm shelter company to work with and Survive a Storm is the perfect partner for us. Whether you're at a mobile home, or you're in a house like mine that doesn't have a basement or a good place to take shelter in, this is a great and affordable option. So if you want one of these or if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend getting one. Go check out the website and it would mean a lot to us if you got one from them. You certainly don't want to get stuck in a situation where you wish you would have.